you can't regulate your emotions, you're going to have a dysregulated nervous system, which means then you're going to have, you know, dysfunction or disease in the body. Daniel, mate, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thanks for having me, mate. Good to be here. That's a good, man. So what are some stuff that you've been learning recently that have you found that's been like really useful, impactful, or just been like a real good lesson? Man, for me, the last six months, so we moved out to Gold Coast, similar to you, about August last year, September. Um, prior to then, it was always movement, training, health, but similar to yourself, I've uh, kind of found you know the mindset, psychology side of things quite interesting. So yeah, I'm sure we can jam on that for a bit. Um, it all started actually when I went to the Cool To Be Conscious event in September, I think. So yeah, something I've been really fascinated in the last, what's that, six months has been, yeah, just going deeper into things like, you know, masculine, feminine energies, um, understanding the connecting myself better so I can connect with other people better. And that's really helped, you know, both personally um, with some health issues I was having, but also like with connecting with my own clients, getting better results with people and being able to connect on a deeper level that goes beyond just, you know, we're laughing before about back pain. It's like, you know, the old traditional model of just, rub and crack and train versus now having that more like holistic 5d approach where we can look at all facets of health dude how how's that working at the moment like what does it actually look like yeah it's unreal man i mean i think it just adds another dimension to what i was already doing like you know my background traditionally was a personal trainer so i was you know very much programming strength training rehab that sort of thing and then studied osteopathy at uni and then was doing more of the manual therapy practice so you know now it's really like taking the best of both worlds of you know hands-on therapy with strength training, nutrition, but now also like, you know, being able to have those conversations and go a little bit deeper with people and actually connect because I find that's a big thing that's missing with a lot of patients is like people don't really treat the person. They treat the disease or they treat the condition and no one actually sits down and talks to them about how they're feeling or what's going on for them in their world. And we know, you know, that obviously our emotions can influence our physiology and vice versa. So we can't just compartmentalize things and expect it to get better. Which is nuts. I'm, I'm sure people listening are like, just had for a second and talk. What our emotions <laughs> affect our physiology? <laughs> Can't say that word. Physiology. It's like how? Like how does that work? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it's all you know. Obviously, we look at the systems in the body: nervous system, immune system, lymphatic system, musculoskeletal system. Like all these systems are, you know, the immune system. I might say that twice. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> um, you know, all these systems are obviously interconnected and interrelated. Like the principles of osteopathy. You know, the body is a unit. Structure and functions interrelated. And all our systems are also interrelated and influence one another. So, yeah, you might have a you know a muscle strain or a tendinopathy or a disc bulge or you know gut issues, but it's like if you're not addressing those other systems, either the nervous system, which is the biggest thing that's going to influence that nervous system, when we look at the nervous system being you know, sympathetic, a fight and flight, a stress versus that parasympathetic, you know, a rest and digest, feed and breed. Now, our emotional state is directly going to influence the state of the nervous system we're in, and that's their sorry that's then going to have a downstream effect on essentially adaptations and what the body's doing. So if you can't regulate your emotions, you're going to have a dysregulated nervous system, which means then you're going to have, you know, dysfunction or disease in the body. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like flows down a river like that. Like, yeah. So do you think it stems from there or? Personally, the more I look into it, the more I think so. I mean, I think it's always, I say to my clients, like a lot of clients when they come see me and the people I work with and coach, they want to know an answer and they want it to be definitive like what is the reason i've got pain what is the reason i've got disease and it'd be great to be like cool you know we can pinpoint one thing that the problem is but 99.99 percent of the time it's always everything there's always multiple things at the same time so you know if we do look at the hierarchy so to speak how many people do you know in your closest friendship group who are experiencing stress you and me are probably different because we hang out with people who are quite conscious <laughs> but even then you know are you and me business owners yeah, every single person stressed. So if you're someone who's stressed and let's say you're not aware of all the stuff we're talking about, which most people, you know, we don't learn this stuff at school or uni. We learn about science. We don't learn about emotions and communication, so to speak, unless you really invest money and time into learning these things. If you can't regulate your emotions and your nervous system, then you know these things are inevitable. And that could be a massive underlying factor of why your healing is slower or not happening at all. And therefore why your health is not optimal or you know, if that goes on for a chronic period of time, it might start off as lack of energy, gut issues, you know, muscle strains, but six months, 12 months, five years, 10 years later, you know, it ends up being autoimmune diseases or cancer or disease or, you know, some of these more sinister things that we couldn't see coming, quotation marks, but, you know, the body whispers before the body screams 
and we just ignore it. Everyone listen to that again. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. It's so true. I like how you ex- explain all of that. Now, just add like a personal question when you're talking. I was like, what specifically is like, you can move the mic around. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you can move it you like. Um, like, what specifically is the difference between like osteopathy, if I said that correctly, yeah. and like the other practices? Well, first of all, fantastic, because most people say like osteopractor or like physiotherapy, <laughs> <laughs> osteotherapy. Um, yeah, so I mean, osteopathy, osteop, no, I can't say it. Osteopathy is an allied health profession. Uh, similar to I guess the same family as like physiotherapy chiropractic would all be very similar like we go to uni and study the same sort of stuff in terms of our undergrads we diversify a little bit when it comes to postgraduate studies but really comes down to the principles I said before so all our therapy and stuff is based off the body's a unit structure and function interrelated and the body has its own self-healing and self-regulatory mechanisms which I think number three is the most important self-healing, self-healing and self-regulatory mechanisms which is basically saying I don't heal you, you heal you. There's roadblocks. I just have to find where the roadblocks are and you know, undo those roadblocks and then your body has its own potential to heal and optimize its function. So I really like that because you know, it empowers the individual. It's not me saying you need to have dry needle in, your back adjusted, you know, insert intervention of choice four times a week for the rest of your life, which is very disempowering to people and obviously can be quite you know, costly versus if I say, hey man, you know, we have everything within us to actually heal could you do these practices that are free? Breath work, meditation, journaling, eat good food, get outside, get some sun, connection, friends, family. You know, that's a lot more empowering, a lot more achievable, and it's going to have a much more profound effect because of that interrelationship between all the systems. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is insane. I'd love to hear, like... Uh, I think I went on a tangent about what osteo was, but... <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Sums it up. Um, I'd love to hear, like, a story like that you've work through like you know, like a specific person and mm. then like and they've come to you and they've been like oh I've had like this problem this problem this problem and you've like walked them through to them like succeeding and why yeah so I mean, there's a few but I'd say one that stands out most when you initially said that was a lady I saw in Adelaide and she had a plethora of issues you know your typical uh, comes in bit of a shopping list of issues both from a health point of view and a mechanical point of view I guess and had seen you know a number of therapists got minimal results, if any results, and a bit on the bit of the merry-go-round, so to speak. So, excuse me. Um, so with her, you know, I obviously asked her what she'd done, she'd have all the traditional approaches, but no one had obviously gone through a lot of the emotional aspects of what she was doing. No one had even looked at her lifestyle, which to me seems like the most obvious things to look at. But again, sometimes we're so, de- we're so connected to the diagnosis of disc bulge that we kind of forget to look at all those other things I was saying before. So honestly, I don't think it's anything amazing and magical i think it's just like doing the basic things consistently and properly versus trying to overlook the general stuff to try and find the sexy solution so with her it was just stripping things right back you know looking at her food looking at her nutrition looking at her lifestyle trying to get her to reconnect to herself like i got her to stop training completely she was training six days a week at 45 eating 1200 calories <laughs> you know was quite overweight back pain knee pain shoulder pain neck pain headaches migraines gut issues she had bacterial overgrowth she had parasites a lot of stuff going on (laughs) so like I said shopping list so in that situation it can be quite overwhelming it's like you know where do I even start and I guess in the traditional medical model would be this thing gets this solution this disease gets this tablet this this, you know dysfunction gets this intervention but if we kind of get into zoom out again and go well the body is a unit if I, I can't solve anything in isolation the body doesn't get disease in isolation doesn't heal in isolation so for her it was just stepping back and going how can I give the body you know extra resources but how can I also minimize you know where she's wasting resources right now on all these other areas of her life that are not contributing to optimal health so for her it looked like this is the exact plan (laughs) walking six days a week got her to put a backpack on her front load up the backpack with 10 kilos sunshine nasal breathing only outside connection no phone hitting multiple birds with one stone so to speak well, what I like to say, one of my mentors was, you know, don't try and hit two birds one stone, try and take out the whole pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's something very, very simple. 30 minutes, aerobic conditioning, sunlight, vitamin D, outside, nature, grounding, breathing, breath work, regulating your nervous system, killing multiple birds. And then from there, you know, looking at what she's actually doing day to day, what's causing those stresses and what is creating such a high amount of stress in her body, relationships, work, training, massive one, six days a week, smashing herself. 1200 calories 
this lady was about 110 kilos. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, we, we can't, we need energy from somewhere, you know, basic thermodynamics. Energy can't be created nor destroyed. If you have that much going in and that much going out, what's the body going to start to do? We have a hierarchy, this is a bit of a tangent, but we have a hierarchy of systems in the body. And obviously we talked about the systems before being you know, your brain, your gut, your lymphatic system, your immune system. How long do you reckon those systems can go without energy before they start to shut down? I'm sorry, what are those things together? Oh, I mean, in general. How long can your brain go without energy or oxygen? I'm going to take a random guess and say one second. Your brain? Yeah. Couple, couple of minutes. There's a couple of minutes? Oh, yeah. okay. Couple of minutes. <laughs> you do. I was like, mate, one second, we're done. <laughs> yeah, so like a couple of minutes to your brain, you know, how long can your body, how long will your body stay alive if your heart stops working? Yeah, you got some yeah, time there. Not very long, yeah. yeah. So it's like, if we look at these systems, it's like, they're going to be highly prioritized. Mm -hmm. Can you live without a bicep? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you live without a tendon? Oh, I can live without a tendon. Yeah. Can females live without their period? Probably not. Hmm? Oh, but some can. What, what is a period? To get into it, like... I mean, like, you know, obviously... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not too much detail, but it's like, if, you're, if your body's unable to preserve itself, why would you bring another human into the world? Yeah. Like from a physiology point of view. So, you know, it makes sense that they're going to stop going through those reproductive processes because it doesn't make sense from an innate perspective of, well, if I don't have a sufficient energy, why am I going to start producing the eggs and start to try and even be in a position where I can get pregnant? So how many competitors you've obviously competed? How many competitors do you know that they start getting into the depths of their prep and they start to lose their period, gut issues? Oh man, it's not even, it's not even um, just competitors. There's just oh, like girls that girls. Laura of yeah. so many girls that... Stuff. I don't know if it's stress or something. Uh, you probably more the person to ask about it, but they just see it so commonly. It's like, ah, I did this thing yeah. through the stressful period of my life, whether it be working really hard, whether it be a relationship stress, whether it be trying to get healthy and fit, um, mm. and then next minute, what's my period? Yeah, 100%. So it's massively prevalent. So like in terms of those systems, it's like, well, you know, your brain can't last very long, your heart can't last very long, your immune system obviously can last longer, but that's where we're going to start to have autoimmune conditions. How prevalent are autoimmune conditions in 2020? So oh, what, what year are we in? Sorry, 2022. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Last two years has gone like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we look at the systems in the body. It's like, well, cool. Those things are prioritized because we can't live very long without those things. Muscles, tendons, soft tissue, period, you know, hormones, those kind of things. It's like a nice to have, not need to have. So the way I explain it when I teach my students is like, imagine you go to Woolies, you know, and you shop in and you got a hundred bucks in your pocket and you go up to the front, you got all your groceries and it costs 120. And you've got your steak there, you've got your meats, you've got your dairy, you've got your veg and fruit, and then you've got some chocolate, some ice cream. If you have $100, what are you gonna start doing? With the, with the shopping? Hmm. You have $120 worth of food, but you only have 100 in your pocket. Hmm. So what are you gonna start? What are you gonna put through first? For me, I'm definitely gonna put through the steak and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. So we're going to put through all the priorities and we're going to start to prioritize where our energy, in this case, money is going to go. So we can think in the body, energy is ATP or cash. So in that situation, you're going to start to prioritize things. And the things that are left over, the ice cream, the chocolate, all the things that aren't as important, well, to you, that's obviously very subjective. <laughs> Could be the most important thing. Is going to get, you know, thrown out. We don't have sufficient energy for it. It's the same as the body. In that situation, the steak is the immune system, the brain, the heart, the chocolate is the you know, essentially the muscles, the tendons, the musculoskeletal system, the hormones. So it makes sense that when people come to see me in the clinic and they've got these health issues that are like lower down, which is how I say it, it's like if we don't look upstream at what's happening in these more important systems on the hierarchy, then the flow on effect is always going to mean that these systems are experiencing symptoms, disease or dysfunction. And therefore that's why we have to have that zoomed out approach and that holistic approach because otherwise you can't just treat a muscle as a muscle. It's just always going to come back. So like, how do you optimize? How do you optimize it? Yeah. It comes down to simple. It's regulation of your nervous system. Yeah. It's number one. How do you do that? Nervous system regulation. So things like breath work, things like meditation, things like journaling, things like ice baths. That's what we love. Yeah. You're <laughs> oh, getting one after. Yeah. After this, <laughs> woo, <laughs> getting myself ready. Um, you know, anything that's going to help to essentially balance out that you know tone in our nervous system. So when I say tone, we've got the autonomic nervous system, the central nervous system. The autonomic nervous system houses parasympathetic, sympathetic, and enteric nervous system, which is the relationship between our brain and our gut. We'll just talk about the other two for now. Though. 
So those two are the ones that are going to be influenced the most by our emotions. So again, I said, if you're someone who's like very, very triggered easily, you have a low, what I call sympathetic threshold, you're easily triggered, you're going to spend the majority of your time in this sympathetic dominance. When you're in a sympathetic state, your body is what we call catabolic. We both know what that means. We're losing gains. <laughs> yeah. If you're someone who wants to be healing and growing, you want to be in an anabolic state. So we need to be able to get into the parasympathetic nervous system. So I say people that have disease or dysfunction, it's the same as wanting to someone who wants to gain muscle, hypertrophy. You need to have a surplus of energy in the body and we need to have enough resources to actually build or repair the damage that we've done. Could be damage to the intestinal lining, we got issues, could be damage to the tendons or the muscles, could be damage to you know, the blood brain barrier, could be damage to a lot of different things. But the first thing is we're gonna to have to regulate nervous system so then the body has sufficient energy to actually heal those things. So all those modalities are free don't cost much they're a bit shit you know ice bars aren't pleasant at first <laughs> but it could be get addicted to them. <laughs> yeah but even then like there's a few different ways we can get into it we can start with um one of the favorite ones i have which is from my mentor perry nicholson stop chasing pain is get a glass of cold water stick your tongue in it for 10 seconds like just the tip of your tongue like ice water and do that three times and what you're doing there is trying to stimulate your vagus nerve vagus nerve is the king of the parasympathetic nervous system so you can get a very similar effect then you can move to cold showers Start with 30 seconds, build up to three minutes. And you can obviously, you know, move to things like if you have access to places like rigs, you know, shout out to rigs, you know, you can get into a cold bath that's eight to 12 degrees. And from there you can get into the ice bath and do zero like we do. So it's all a spectrum. It doesn't need to be extreme modalities. And that's the biggest thing about coaching. Yeah, it's like not everyone has to do this one thing. It's like, we think what is the principle behind doing an ice bath? It's nervous system regulation. It's you know, ability to control our emotions find peace and chaos <laughs> you know we can do that in other ways we just have to find which method is the right solution for the client in front of us at that specific time which is crazy so we get to the nervous system was one you said there were some other things yeah so nervous system regulation number one lifestyle which again is going to intertwine with nervous system because obviously lifestyle is going to have to stress nutrition is a big one you know nutrition is not <laughs> something that's done well in 2022 i would say you know we're in a massive uh, pandemic so to speak of you know people with nutrient deficiencies and you know mal malnourished you know we all eat plenty of food but you know there's a difference between consuming food consuming calories versus consuming you know optimal amounts of nutrients and vitamins and minerals and things that actually support our body and give us the ability to you know function optimally um, and obviously there's some low-hanging fruits that we can start with you know eating red meat fruit and veg you know eating whole foods you know removing refined foods processed foods removing things like you know, uh, industrial oils, you know, a massive one, canola oil, sunflower oil, throw that in the bin, margarine, <laughs> throw that in the bin. Dude, it's like the, one of the things that on that is just, it's so simple in terms of like what to eat and what not to eat. Yeah. And we all know it's literally meat, fruit, veg. Like, yeah, simple. In, in all simple terms, like that's what to eat. But my goodness, I think I can speak for everyone here as well. Like, it's just hard not to eat other stuff because it's so readily available. Mm. It's crazy. Even myself, personally, like sometimes I find it so hard. I'm like, God damn, just a whole bag of dark chocolate almonds <laughs> <laughs> in 10 minutes. Why? At least it's dark chocolate. Yeah, at least it's dark chocolate. It is tasty. Nitric oxide right. gains. <laughs> I'll down one of those bad boys so quickly. But yeah, yeah, dude, 100%. I agree with you on that because it is crazy. And especially, I think, um, just myself personally, looking at food from the lens of what's the new nutrients in this and what's the nutritional value and density and then looking at other food and saying, well, there's not too much nutrients or density like in here in terms of vitamins and minerals um, and all the nutrients that we need. Mm. And instead of having the, the lens of, oh, I eat this for protein macros or eat this for good or bad or healthy, it's like, well, majority of my day with all of my food decisions, I just try to have the most nutrient dense foods as possible every time I eat. 100%, yeah. That's it. Like, it doesn't need to be complicated, eh? I mean, we know like, you don't have to be a nutritionist, dietitian, coach, personal trainer to know that, you know, this is potentially going to have a higher value and less value as a food. Like, it's not, again, like you said, good or bad. Good or bad is contextual based off the individual and based off the context. But, you know, we, we know <laughs> if we should eat this or should eat that or we need to minimize and moderate. So I think a lot of it, even with my clients, same thing. Like, you know, I used to be very strict on like calorie counting and very strict on like eat this and don't eat that when I first started. Now it's more so about, you know, obviously education, but again, even going back to what we said at the very start of the podcast, like, where does that come from? Why do you feel the need to overindulge? You know, why do you need to be chasing dopamine in all these different ways? Why is it excessive amounts of sex and chocolate and, 
you know, <laughs> all these things that necess- aren't necessarily best for us, but obviously give us that feeling of, you know, feeling good about ourselves, which comes back to, again, conversations and being able to connect with people and understand why, because otherwise we can tell them all the good foods to eat and they know that that's not good for them, but, you know, they've still got that addiction and those pathways are still a bit dysregulated. Which is hard part, because you've got it. Because I acknowledge it within myself as well. Sometimes I'll be set a goal for something, you know, put in my routine. I'm like, why am I just not mm. doing it? God damn. So I have to like sit there for a while and really think think about it, where it is and what I can actually do. Then go, oh, this is why. This may be not. This is where the thing is happening for whatever it is. And then, cool, let's do it. Do I need to give myself a break? Do I need to take the pressure off for a little bit? And then maybe do I actually need to sit onto this now? So thanks for saying that. No, easy man <laughs> just pattern recognition but well, that again comes back to nervous system it's like a lot easier to do that when you're in a calm collected state than when you're hyper sympathetic and stressed so you know, something as simple as breath work just to bring us back into you know that ability to connect and actually reflect effectively can give us a lot more it's almost like you have a different lens of how you view things you know i'm sure you are into breath work and do all that kind of stuff yeah so you know it's like you almost like a different person it's like you get access and can view things very differently that you couldn't see before which then means you can start to pick up on these patterns and behaviors. And then obviously the first thing is obviously identifying the problem and then making a solution to the problem. Most people are very solution focused, outcome focused, but not very great at the process or even identifying what the problem is. And we just get stuck in this cycle of, you know, as Newton says, trying the same thing, expecting a different outcome, you know, in definition of insanity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll, oh be in, we'll be in there. Yeah, we'll be in there. So I was banging my head against the wall there. Um, sort of like as well, like the, even risk management. It's mm. extremely important, I think. And in terms of, you know, I believe, I'm sure everyone's listening to this, that breath, breath work is really starting to just like take over everywhere. And it's definitely like, you can see why, because it's so powerful. However, you wouldn't think like, I don't know, myself personally, like 10 years ago, I'm like, what the hell is breath work mm. and where is it happening? And I was like, now it's like, there is such a place for it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I believe paying attention and the simple awareness of everything that we're talking about is just risk management. Mm. 100%. Yeah, to be completely honest. So, we'll go back to him. <laughs> Tangents. Nervous system. <laughs> Nervous system regulation, lifestyle, yeah. stress management. Lifestyle, and stress nutrition. management, nutrition. Was there yeah. anything else there? I'd say last one would be connection. Yeah. Yeah, just obviously that's going to, again, have an influence. And even with our conversation here, it's like you can see we can't put those things in categories, they're all interrelated. But yeah, obviously connection is the biggest one as well. And I reckon for me personally, won't bore you with my story, but you know, I went through a pretty big burnout from late 2019 the sort of like end of last year mid last year which before i moved up and i reckon a big one of the biggest parts of it which i wasn't addressing was a lot of this you know mental emotional stuff so i think if you're really going to achieve true health then you can't neglect the emotional aspect and the psychological aspect because it's massive and on our influence on our physiology so connection whatever that is for you it's you know for me it's it's making sure i have some time to myself it's doing breath work meditation that's my daily routine that helps me feel present and conscious allows me to connect better with other people it's the relationships that you spend you spend your time with who are you spending time with people that inspire you people that drain you um you know what are you doing with your spare time you know you're out getting drunk on the piss you know you're actually doing something that's going to help you with your health not that that's bad again it's all moderation and and balance but you know those things are all these little one percenters are going to start to add up and influence your overall state so yeah i think if you can nail those four areas which again none of those areas require physio chiro cracking your back and thousands of dollars of supplements all that stuff is within you and you can actually do it quite effectively um you know you're going to notice dramatic differences in your health overall yeah i think the one thing that people lack for that is like structure and plan right yeah 100 is that what you help people with absolutely yeah i mean you can give you can give someone a plan obviously the execution is up to them (laughs) but i mean i think the biggest thing with coaching as you've probably realized too is like just starting with like micro wins like i think everyone you know, tries to go from point one to point two to point three to point four. My like explanation to my clients is always think, how can I get from one to one point one to one point two, one point three? It might seem very, very micro and very minute, but it's like if you can improve, you know, the old saying one percent every day, every week, it's not dramatic, it's not sexy, but it's like, well, I'd rather you start with doing breath work twice a week. Don't try and say seven, you know. Have you read Atomic Habits? No, but I know all about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Everyone listening should read that book. <laughs> Atomic <laughs> Habits. Uh, or listen to the book. Yeah, and that's like one of the big, like I read that a few years ago and that was really interesting in all this stuff we're talking about here in terms of just like trying to create micro goals that seem that are stupid, stupidly easy. Like instead of saying I'm going to go for a 5K run, I'm going to do my shoelaces up. 
because what's going to happen after you do your shoelaces up? You're probably going to go for the run. <laughs> I'm going to go for, for a five minute run. Yeah. When you get to five minutes in, you're going to stop. You're probably just going to keep running. So it's like trying to create these like action steps or like micro goals where it's like stupidly easy to achieve them. But then when you get there, you probably most likely just continue anyway. Versus what most people do is we have this like, you know, massive avalanche, avalanche or, you know, massive sort of Mount Everest that we try and climb. And then we just go through the cycle you said before of like, you know, you set a goal, we don't do it. And then we try again the next week and we try again next Monday and we just go through the cycle of trying the same thing and never actually getting the outcome, which is the definition of insanity. And we could just start with something stupid small. You know, yeah. Try one thing at a time. Don't have to do breath work, meditation, change your diet, train four times a week, ocean swim, 10,000 steps, sleep nine hours all in the same week. Let's just nail breath work for four weeks. Then we can, once we can, you can show me, you can tick that box of competency, then awesome. You pass go, collect $200. Now you can start your meditation. We start to habit stack. And then if we start to habit stack and focus on those process goals, the outcome really is inevitable. Cool. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what is like the most common thing that you see like with people? Like the most common thing that people come to you? Like, in terms of? Like whatever the... Like what they present with in general? Yeah. Yeah. It's changed with how I've changed in terms of like my practice. Like when I was in the clinic, it would be traditional back pain, neck pain would be every second person would be one of those things. Most common you can... Yeah. <laughs> my back my neck <laughs> um so that got you know that was pretty common pretty boring i'd say now just because i'm working more online and i'm you know sort of positioned myself more so in terms of like the health field and health optimization versus i guess the way i view it and this is not saying it's all like that but i find that the allied health model medical model is very like disease management you know injury management you, know, you have a problem let's fix the problem but we're not necessarily fixing the root cause which is why i got, kind of got really bored of it and a bit unfulfilled Versus now, it's like more health optimization. You don't necessarily need to have a problem, but we're going to try and make you the best you're going to be in all areas. So I'd say now it's mainly people who just want to optimize their health in all areas. They want better energy. They want better sleep. They want more libido. <laughs> and we all want that. Um, you know, they want to be stronger. They want to be able to move better without limitations. I'd say in terms of disease and like things they come with problem-wise, I'd say it's still back pain and gut issues. They're the two that I see the most. What are like the which I think are both interrelated by the way why why so when we look at the, <laughs> so when we look at the body and we have the lymphatic system yeah. yeah so we have lymphatic system nervous system can you please just explain that for the listeners yes good call so your lymphatic system is our third circulatory system in the body so you've got your circulatory system which is your arteries which carry oxygenated blood and they look red in a textbook and we've got veins which carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart and they're blue and then we've got lymphatic system which is this green looking thing in the textbook have you ever seen a cadaver in real life? It's like, man, I can tell you, it's not colored. It's so hard to tell. Really? <laughs> it's like, man, I thought it was going to be red, blue, green, yellow. No, it's just all like 50 shades of yellow and white. So yeah, not, not, not pleasant. Um, so with your lymphatic system, you don't have you know, a pump. You don't have any pressure. You don't have any valves, which basically means the way I explain it, it's like with your heart, your heart pumps and then obviously blood moves around the body. Then to get blood back to the heart, we have veins, which are you know, pressurized and we have valves and then obviously negative pressure of gravity. With lymphatic system, we don't have any pressure, we don't have any valves, nothing. So the only way we can make it move is manual pressure. So it's kind of like if you have toothpaste, and you know when you get to the very end of the toothpaste, you're trying to get it out, and you have to squeeze it like centimeter by centimeter. Yeah. Oh, there. 100%, so annoying. So, and you do it for like a week before you finally <laughs> commit to buying a new toothpaste. Yeah. Oh, it's like, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, so that's like your lymphatic system. So it's, uh, its goal is to essentially... Cr- um, collect all the waste products that are uh, associated with this gas exchange process in the body and then mop it all up, take it to the liver, liver does detoxification, and then we excrete it either via the gut and pooing or obviously via the uh, kidneys and peeing. So lymphatic system is your main system for detoxification, but because it doesn't have valves and pressure, we have to create manual movement to move it around the body. So breathing, massive one. Your diaphragm acts as a hydraulic pump, pushes down into your abdominal cavity, makes everything move and you get propulsion of fluid massive so breathing again very very handy (laughs) and not just nervous system regulation also for your lymphatic system your lymphatic system produces or is part of your immune system so massive for your immune system as well your gastrointestinal tract fun fact your small intestine produces around 70 percent of your neurotransmitters and also your immune cells so poor gut health is going to influence neurotransmitters dopamine serotonin also going to influence t cells and b cells which are the things that affect your immunity for you know certain viruses and diseases um 
So we want our lymphatic system pumping. And with these systems, we can say they run side by side. They're like best friends. So you can imagine if my pinky is you know, a lymph node or a lymph, uh, a lymph vessel, then we've got an artery, then we've got a vein, then we've got a nerve. All these things are going to run parallel to each other. So if one's dysfunctional, all of them are going to be dysfunctional. Yeah. So if you've got a lot of them around the gut. There's a very high density of all these things around the gut area. The nerves that exit your lumbar spine and the nerves that exit the front of the lumbar spine are going to supply the gut. Whoa. So all your the nerves in like your gut, which have all those four things, link mm. down to your lumbar spine. That's where the nerves come from. So every, every lumbar segment, you've got a, a ventral nerve yep. and a dorsal nerve. So essentially both of these nerves are going to enter the same point on the lumbar spine and they're going to travel up to the brain. But you have, you have input from visceral structures, like all the organs and kidneys, and then you have input from the muscular structures and the active structures. So if we have input, let's say, from the gut, that's saying, hey, I'm not happy, there's a lot of inflammation, there's a lot of you know, dysfunction in the gut, and that information's coming in and converging on the same spot, when all this information relays up the spine to the brain, the brain can't tell where it's coming from. So you've got an input coming from the left, from the gut, an input coming from the right, from the muscles and the soft tissues, the input from the gut's all, you know, super inflamed it's called neurogenic inflammation neuro meaning created by the nervous system genic genesis inflammation inflammation so now because it doesn't know where it's coming from the body's number one priority is survival and protective mechanisms will then potentially cause pain which is sensitization as a protective mechanism to stop you doing stuff so you could have what they call non-specific lower back pain which is where it's like it's kind of dull and achy but i can't pinpoint it it always hurts it might be triggered by certain foods or triggered by stress it's worse when it's cold it's worse when it's stressful those kind of situations and if it gets treated and this is a massive one if it gets treated and this is, was like eye-opening for me a few years ago because i used to just be like deadlifts will fix everything <laughs> <laughs> and then deadlifts weren't fixing everything yeah. and i was like this is interesting and then i noticed the pattern between clients who were having gut issues or constipation or diarrhea or you know food sensitivities and chronic back pain and i was like i don't know what the answer is but i'm gonna kind of investigate this because it can't be a coincidence and open a basic anatomy book from third year uni <laughs> that I didn't pay much attention to back in the day. Um, yeah, and you look at it right there and it's like the answer's right in front of you. It's like, okay, all these systems interrelate. There is a large amount of structures in the gut that are going to influence this area of the spine and that therefore means that if you know, one has, is problematic, it's probably going to affect the other area and vice versa. It's pretty cool, though. Oh, man, that is insane. So what do people do to, like, fix that? Improve gut health, decrease stress, improve your lymphatic system and regulate your nervous system <laughs> back out all the same things again so eat well go for runs <laughs> yeah that's the thing is like the Breathe more lots. the deeper i get into this stuff over the years is like the more like it's there's specificity is important in certain situations 100 percent. but a lot of people's problems which they don't want to they don't want the answer because it's not sexy is a lot of it's do the basic stuff general stuff and you're not doing it properly like you want to, they want to hear there's a certain specific thing they have to do when really it's like those four answers are the same answers I give to 50 people a week with different conditions and different diagnoses. But it's like, well, there's no point in addressing this as a bicep tendon tear if your body internally is chaos because we're not going to have the resources available to heal and to optimize things. So we need to get that first and then the flow on effect after that is now we can go look at the bicep and have a more specific approach. So we still address it, but it's like, well, you need to start from the bottom of the pyramid get the foundations right and then we can start to be hyper specific about is it a or is it b but there's no point even worrying about a or b when the entire system's in chaos and it'd probably be like more common that when this entire system isn't in chaos that and it's more like solid that you'd be like well there's way less injuries <laughs> yeah 100%. well there's been a lot of situations like in clinic and just you know in coaching like where i have people that have specific conditions or specific diagnosis and you know they've seen people and they think I'm a voodoo doctor because I do stuff differently. But I mean, my question, my statement to them is always, well, have you everything, has everything you've done so far worked? And they say, no, otherwise I wouldn't be in my office. Then I use the Newton joke as a bit of a laugh because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, would you like to do the same thing? Or would you like to try something different? I'm like, might sound crazy, but why don't you just try these few things for a week or two? It's like, why is this guy making me do like breath work and nutrition and all this stuff when I just have elbow pain? It doesn't make sense. It's like, well, because a lot of people's conditions is very related to inflammation in the body. And if you have high amounts of inflammation or what's called you know, high systemic inflammation or high um, allostatic load is another word for it in the body, it's basically saying we have this massive buildup of stress and inflammation in the body and it's gonna, it has to go somewhere. You know, we either get rid of it or it's just going to travel somewhere in the body. You know, it might be the elbow, 
then a month later it might be the knee. It's like you can start chasing these symptoms or you can just address the actual problem, which is the system overall. Yeah. It's like when you go to the movies back in the day and they have that little game, what's it called? Whack-a-mole? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like you can chase everyone. You're never going to get them or you can just, you know, fix a damn machine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> get a new dim yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a bigger thing to hit them with because <laughs> yeah. that's what happens it's like you know you've got dysfunction in the body disease you can't if you don't actually address the root cause it's just going to move around and you're just going to be chasing symptoms forever and you're never actually going to get better and that's the truth like if it was a sexier answer i'd give it <laughs> <laughs> if there was it definitely do it mm. oh man so like if people are at that stage in their life where it's saying they've started to figure a few of these things out and they've mm. started to like do really well and um, they've started to like make some progress and they're sort of at that position where they're like, okay, I really want to start like investing investing into myself, whether that be learning or doing something or like whatever it may be. What would mm. you like encourage people to do or start to see first? To optimize their health? Yeah. Or to invest in themselves. Yeah, specifically. They're like, I want to focus mm. on me. I think it depends on what your biggest gap is like i mean I, I personally think that every human can benefit from learning more about breath work and nervous system regulation because that's going to affect everything so like my view is always try and choose the interventions that are going to have the biggest return on investment like if you can only choose one thing how's it get, like what something's gonna have widespread results so that would be one breath work understand the nervous system um you know whether that's just going to a weekend course or a two-day what they call it um you know, like a two-day uh, retreat or something like that, like a health retreat and just, you know, going to some of those things where you can be exposed to it and be immersed in it. And, you know, I feel like those are very powerful because you might not understand those things and also you might not feel comfortable. You go to one of those things, you get the experience and now it's like, wow, you know, I want to actually get more invested into these things. So that's one. Um, two would be blood work. If you're not doing it already, how often do you service your car? Yeah, exactly. Everyone yeah. serves their car every <laughs> six months to a year. Yeah. Yeah, you should either. be doing blood work at least bi yearly. If you're not, you should be doing it 100%. Get it through the GP, bulk bill it, find a coach who can prescribe it for you because, you know, you, you're going in blind otherwise. And I think all the stuff I said before is going to take you to a certain level. You know, if you're someone who's got chronic disease and poor state of health, you can probably get 80% better just from doing the stuff I've said. If you have something specific, like I mentioned before, specificity is still important when it's when we've ticked all the boxes. If we haven't ticked all the boxes, there's no point trying to find specifics. So once you get to that level, if you feel like, you know, I've, this happens a lot, I've tried everything, I've done all the things you've said, but I'm still not feeling 100%. In that situation, it's like, okay, we need to know what we're playing with so we obviously know which tool and toolbox to use. So in that situation, I'd say, cool, get some bloods done, find a practitioner, you know, GP who knows what they're doing, or, you know, maybe a functional health practitioner who can actually interpret that effectively and then be able to work with you. Um, so shout out to a friend of mine, Matteo Joffrey. He's really, really good at it. Um, That'll be the second thing. And then the third thing to do um, would be, yeah, emotions and mindset. You know, if you're not already doing work on that, you know, either yourself, it could be reading books and journaling, or it could be going to, again, a two day course and, you know, learning off someone like Dr. Espen or, you know, going to an event like Cool to Be Conscious, like some of those things where we can just actually start to connect with ourselves a bit better. Dude, I love that so much. For people who are interested in mm-hmm. you, man, where can they find it? Or last one, get a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> get a good coach, um, for sure. Yeah, so where to find me? Uh, mainly on Instagram. So I have two accounts. It's dr.daniel.kirkbride um, or functional underscore movement underscore medicine. Unreal. And I'll link all of those below the show notes so everyone is listening. Perfect. And I'd like you to leave everyone with a challenge. So I Ooh. like to get on because as we talked about, it's all well and good to learn about all these things and and think about all this stuff but there's a second thing to do and that is to take action on stuff Mm. so for people who have listened to this podcast if you could challenge them to do something that they could do this like today as they're listening to this afterwards or this week sometime Mm -hmm. what is one thing that you could challenge them to do i always get this my clients do this 30 second cold shower every morning you can put the hot on first but finish off with 30 seconds on cold Deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. If you do long breaths, it should take you four breaths and you'll, you're all good. You'll feel energized. You'll feel like Superman. Someone beeps you in traffic, you'll just be like, nah, man, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be zen. Yeah, there you go, guys. Test out your discipline with that one. Man, thanks so much for coming on to the show. No worries, man. Thank you for having me. 